I'm an associate professor in the College of Journalism and Communications. I've been here for 25 years, and I teach mainly ethics and intercultural communication, I mean, on a regular basis. But what I really do here is to train students or facilitate their development into leaders in their fields. Well, telecommunication is about the process of communicating information at a distance. So you can have a message or some kind of, I would call it, communion with someone from who's not in your immediate vicinity. They could be across the street, they could be across the country, they could be around the world. And we telecommunication is both the science of communicating in terms of how you formulate messages, but also the technology that you use to get those messages across effectively to the audiences that you want to receive them. Well, here in our college, we have it divided into three grossly three areas. One of them is, of course, the what we like to call the management aspect of it, where they learn how to actually gather the resources, analyze the audiences, do the calculation about what kinds of programs will, will work, all of those kinds of things, and make sure that there's revenue coming in to support that, right? So that's one area. And they might expect to maybe start off in some aspect of sales and graduate from that into some aspect of management. Uh, maybe they'll do audience analysis. Um, they might even find themselves in a position which they're creating new ventures, trying to find uh, new ideas and capital to support those new ventures. So that's the kinds of things you do in the area of management. In the area of production, which is our second area, which we have perhaps the largest body of students, you learn how, how to actually create content. So it's one thing to have an idea, but it's another thing to be able to transform that into words that can be put on paper, that can be put into some kind of video or audio format in a way that is not only uh, communicates but also looks good and it sounds good and that maybe creates a favorable feeling, a positive feeling in the listener or in the, in the viewer. Uh, and in our production we try to make sure that people understand that they're not just creating something but they're creating it in a context of constraints, usually financial constraints, many of the times social uh, constraints and more now more uh, frequently in the cultural constraints. I mean trying to operate, trying to understand how you create a message that will actually work cross-culturally or internationally is a challenge and we're trying to train our students in not only being able to produce but also to be able to produce within a context. Well I, I would start off by saying you know when I was a student at Columbia University we had we were using film so that gives you some idea and having to go in and edit it and cut it and splice it and all of those kinds of things and now all of that is being done of course in a digital environment in which pretty much anyone can produce and edit and distribute um, both audio and video and even uh, printed messages right so that what what that means is that in a democratized environment People have to be aware of the fact that they're not the only source of information that someone's getting. And not only that, that there is a plethora of resources that people are attending to and that your message is having to compete with all of that. So how can you communicate effectively? How can you compete effectively? Well, for the first thing you would have to do is to find some unique way of telling your story. It has to be something that will not bore the person that's reading or looking at it. Secondly, you'd have to find a platform. How are you going to deliver this to them? I have to give you a good example. I like to communicate with students via email because that's what I'm comfortable with. But my students don't attend to the emails that they send them. They're looking for messages on Facebook or they're looking for messages on Twitter. Or there are, many of them are looking for a blog or something to convey that information to them. So it requires that we constantly be aware of and adjust ourselves to the way that the people we want to reach prefer to be communicated with and also adjust the way, our, increase our amount of knowledge about what the multiplicity of avenues are for that communication. It's something that's not stopping, it's something that's continually involving. I don't even know the names of all the kinds of platforms that are out there that the students are using. I hear tell about them from time to time and I, I sometimes I really feel, Stephen, that it's, uh, it, it's impenetrable. I'll never really understand all the ways in which this generation or is communicating, but you know, I, I rely on my students. Uh, that's actually what I really want to say. I think nowadays as faculty members, we're relying much more on our students and our environments to tell us, to teach us how to teach them or how to inform them about things that they need to know, right? But that they're, they're really our source of inspiration and direction in many ways 
for how we should do our pedagogy. Uh, in the classroom, you can't lecture to students for an hour, 45 minutes, or even a half hour. You can do maybe an introduction, and then you have to give them something hands-on to do. Maybe let them use the technology that they already have so they can track information online or communicate with their friends and bring that. And it enriches the classroom so that it, learning is not about the professor. Learning is about the student being enabled to pursue his or her interests effectively so that they continue to grow in knowledge of uh, whatever it is they're trying to find out. Exactly. And which brings me to our third area. So we have this area called news. And there's, uh, of the three, production and then, of course, management and news. And our news students are, in many ways, I think, on the front lines of trying to feel, figure out what it is that is news. Uh, what it is that, you know, what it is, what is it that's going on today that if communicated makes a difference in the lives of the people that learn about it? Um, and it's not what we've been doing in the past. It's not what officials are doing. It's not necessarily what people in, um, in positions of authority or power are doing. That's important. But I think equally important is to find out what we are doing as community. What, it is, what is it that's given us uh, an or organity, if you would? What is it that makes us function? And what are the new pieces that are transforming the way that we create community together and how we function effectively together as a society? So for example, I think there's a lot, there was a, uh, a speaker here not too, a couple weeks ago um, from Storyteller, I think that's the name of his organization, I forgot, Mark Storyful, My, Mark, Mark uh, thank you. So there's a speaker named Mark Little from Storyful here a few weeks back. And he was talking about how his, the, the, the people, first off, all the people that work with him are very young people. And they're, they're, they're so this, this news gathering operation doesn't exist like anything that we ever thought. It's not a formal kind of organization. We're sort of gathering together information from various outlets or various, um, for, for example, using uh, people who are called eye reporters. People who are doing, providing information, What's the, what's the key to distributing information to people and having them use it? Well, credibility. They want to know that what they're listening to is actually true or that at least it comes from a reputable source. And so to the extent to which you can insert or help people insert, for example, in the new, as I conceive, news work now, is can you insert credibility in what is new, right, so that people feel that it's important and relevant to their lives and so that they act upon it, not just hear about it, but use, give them something that gives them agency in the world in which they live. That really is the challenge now, not communicating information, not telling people everything that's going on, but telling people how what's going on is relevant to their lives so that they can be active in creating alternatives to what they're living now. Well, I don't know that I'm an expert at telling uh, people how to get their career started, but I will say, I'll give you an example of my own life. So what I, when I wanted to, I was interested in being a foreign correspondent. I wanted to find out about, I have some languages and I, some facility in this. So um, I, when, I got, I was, when I got out of school, I went, uh, instead of going to work for Time Magazine, which that was the normal route that people did, and I'm not saying that it's not a good route. And well, Time Magazine is now, I think, either defunct or it's going online. But anyway, that's another conversation. But you know, I, so I went, I got in my car, I got in my Volkswagen, and I drove from New York down to Mexico City. And I went and started knocking on doors. I went to the Associated Press. I went to Expansion Magazine. I went to Newsweek. I just went around town until someone said, oh, this guy wants to work down here. And I got a job working at the AP, right? And I did some freelancing also on the side. And so I think the, the point of this message is that, you know, you really need to go where it is you want to go and start pursuing what it is you want to do. Call the people that are relevant to your interests. Visit them. Write to them. Show up. You know, it's a demonstration of your commitment to what it is you're about, right? And so I know there's some traditional, uh, there are other things to do. I mean, obviously you want to have a, a clip and you want to have a portfolio or you want to have, you know, some demonstration of your ability and you, you know, want to build the kind of relationships with faculty so they can recommend you and have an internship and all those things. That's all the mechanics of it. But really what it takes is your demonstration of your commitment to do the thing that you say that you're about. And then going to the place where that goes on, where that's happening and doing that thing and finding now how other people are doing that thing. People are always excited by people who are excited about what they do. So I think that's some, my advice I would give to folks is to follow that dream, follow that vision, go to where it is you actually want to go. Don't wait for it to show up on your doorstep. Go there 
find a way to go there and, and do it.